When the morning comes, Bulma, we're here. Goku called out to his best friend as he and Chi Chi finally made it to the Earnshaw Lake house after getting out of the flying Nimbus. Great, you two are here. Bulma called back from inside the lake house. Come on in. So Goku and Chi Chi looked at each other's gazes as they went inside the lake house and found Bulma had brought all of the grocery bags and the present gifts. Now that you two are here, we are going to decorate the lake house while Chi Chi will be making dinner for the gang. I will be wrapping presents and Goku will be helping me decorate the whole room," Bulma said, with a big plan she had. Goku gave her a confused look and wasn't sure how to decorate the birthday party. How? Bulma sweat dropped, giving him a look. Really? It means you have to make cards and invitations can be made into wall art, ornaments, gift tags, or garland, honey. Crepe paper and napkins can be made into confetti or garland. Old ribbons and balloons can be used to make a festive wreath. That is what you needed to do is the creativity, Chi Chi told him. Like I had to help Bulma out? Goku asked his fiancée, being so innocent. She nodded. That is, if you wanted to help her, then yes. Goku grinned. Great! Now we better make it quick you guys. We have three days of decorating the party, Bulma warned them. Of course. Goku and Chi Chi said at the same time. Day one. Uh, hey, girls. How do you make decoration again because I've made a mess here? Goku said feeling way confused as Chi Chi and Bulma saw the decoration was ruined. Yes, he messed up the wrappers and the ribbons. He wasn't sure how to do it, he also accidentally ripped all the ribbons and the balloons. Bulma started to panic while Chi Chi palmed her face in disappointment. Goku, it's all ruined. Now we need to fix this, Bulma shouted before she could manage to fix the room that had filled the mess that Goku had made. Oh Goku, Chi Chi sighed, sounding not happy. Day 2, okay. All fixed. Bulma let out her breath in relief as she finally managed to fix the room and make the decoration. She even had to help Goku out. Yes, he is always an innocent who usually doesn't get it at all. Now let's make some birthday cake for your cousin, Chi Chi said, smiling. Bulma smiled back at her. Great, but tomorrow is her birthday, and we better make it look perfect. And please, please, please make sure the cake doesn't get ruined. I know you're good at baking cakes, Chi Chi nodded, grinning. I'm on it. Goku, I want you to come with me to the grocery store. We're going to buy hot dogs and hamburgers for everyone. But I don't want you to be eating all of them, okay? This is for everyone, not for you. Bulma said as she gave him a contact eye while being so serious about it. Ah, oh, all right. I won't eat them all Bulma. Then Goku began to smile brightly. But everything for Yusuji. I still can't wait to see her. Me, too Goku, but we better get to the store and buy some. Bulma said as she quickly took Goku's hand and went to her car before driving to the store to buy some. Bulma was always in a hurry when she got worried a lot. Day 3. Finally. Bulma sighed in relief as the three of them stepped back and saw the decoration they had built. They couldn't wait to see Yusuji's face when she and the others came. Now what? Goku asked, looking at his best friend. Bulma grinned smoothly. Now we'll go and pick Yusuji and the others up from the capsule corp. Today was a special day for Yusuji Tsukino. She was excited for her 19th birthday. She couldn't wait to see Bulma, who was supposed to show up very soon, just for a few minutes or so. Yusuji and the others had gone to the capsule corp, where they could meet Bulma's parents while waiting for Bulma to arrive. Yusuji's family is excited to celebrate her birthday, as well as the brief family. Mamoru and the girls finally arrived in no time as they brought their bags with them, ready to go on a road trip to a special place that Yusuji and the others never knew. Yusuji happily cuddled Mamoru, telling him how excited her birthday could be, which made him feel awkward. Mamoru doesn't look too happy, and Yusuji isn't sure why he is feeling that way. Probably he needed some space, or maybe one day, he would tell Yusuji that he wanted to break up with her, which would hurt her. Yusuji refused to believe in such a thing. As Yusuji looked over, she saw her mother talking to her aunt Pansy. Yes, both Pansy and Ikiru are sisters in blood. She knew the Brie family all along since the day she was born. Not even she knew Bulma's friends. She wondered how they were doing. Yusuji couldn't wait to see them. She even missed her best friend, Goku-san. She hadn't seen him for seven years since the Red Ribbon Army was defeated. She missed him a lot and wished she would see him. She wanted to tell Goku everything about her whole story. How she became Sailor Moon. How she was the Moon Princess. And even how she had friends and a boyfriend. It was a long story for her. It was then Yusuji heard a honk coming from the road. She gasped, knowing it was Bulma who finally showed up. She watched Bulma park in front of them and get out of the car, greeting them, Hi guys, 
Boma! Yusuji cried out as she ran to her and hugged her. Boma hugged her back. Hi Yusuji. How are you? She grinned at her after a hug. I'm excited for my birthday. Yusuji said. It has been a long time since we last seen each other. Boma chuckled. Oh Yusuji. We've seen each other a lot. I mean you've been seeing us every month and so no. It hasn't been a while. Boma, I want you to meet my boyfriend and my friends. Boma, this is my boyfriend Mamoru Chiba, and my friends Rei, Makoto, Minako and Ami. Yusuji introduced Boma to them. Then Boma started to glare at Mamoru, which confused Yusuji and the girls. Why hello Mamoru? Mamoru awkwardly smiled at her. Hello Boma, it's been a while since we last broke up. What? Yusuji and the girls shouted in shock. You and Boma? Since when did that happen? How did you two know each other? And how did you two break up? Yusuji shouted in shock. We just met somewhere in West City. And we ended up dating shortly but. Mamoru managed to explain this to Yusuji. But he was cut off by Bulma anyway. Well it turns out Mamoru has been cheating on me with another girl. So I slapped him in the face. And dumped him for good. So you better as well keep an eye on him. Mamoru was one of the troublesome. And I don't trust him. Bulma told her. Still glaring at Mamoru. She blinked. What? Feeling confused, Yusuji turned her head to face him, Mamo, is that true? Mamoru chuckled nervously. I don't know what she's talking about. She probably dumped me for a guy who she had dated with. Bulma rolled her eye. Yeah, right. It was right before I met Yamcha in the desert and then went on a date with him. But I broke up with him twice. Damn, Bulma. It's no wonder why you aren't good at relationships. Ray said with a smirk and arms folded. Bulma glared at her, back off, Ray. Ray rolled her eyes in response to her. So, uh, shall we go somewhere? Minako asked. Yeah, we don't want to stand here and wait forever. We should get going. Makoto said. Bulma now smiled. I'm guessing you two are right. We can't let the birthday girl wait for long. She said as she came to Yusuji and rubbed her head. And there was a person who wanted to see you? Yusuji gasped, now feeling excited. Really? Is it Goku? You'll see, Bulma replied. Come on gang. Let's go on an adventure? Minako said excitedly as Artemis nodded in agreement. So everyone packed their bags and put them in the trunks and the back seats of the car. After they had settled everything, they were finally ready to leave the capsule corp and headed their way to a special place for Yusuji. When everyone arrived, they got out of the car and brought their bags before entering the lake house. Yusuji had never seen it so beautiful as she was amazed by seeing the lake and the house. She felt like living in the lake house. However, she wished that one way, she and Mamoru would get married and live in the lake house. This will be a perfect future for them. As Yusuji kept looking around the lake, a familiar happy male voice approached as she always expected to see someone she knew a long time ago.